All right, welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Monday, May 10th, 2021, and I am your host, Kim Matina. I am a Google certified trainer and educator as well as a technology teacher. And today, I am so happy to have on the show first time guest, Ms. Kara Hawkins Jed Jedlica. She comes to us today from Washington State. She is a professor there at Washington State University in teachers and teaches higher education. And um, we were just chatting a little bit about some of the classes that you that you teach. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, I teach a wide variety of classes. So um, I teach a lot of public relations classes. Um, one of the bigger classes I had, and you had Professor uh, Rebecca Cooney on too, where we kind of team teach the same um, class. So we teach Comstrat 310, which is digital campaigns. Um, and, you know, I kind of get placed other places too. I'm one of those people who can kind of teach a lot of things um, and I enjoy teaching. So definitely came to my career a little differently. Um, spent a lot of time on the industry side. Um, and then just kind of came into teaching. So it was not my goal to set out to be in academia, but now I'm here and it's a lot of fun. So really it enjoyed it. It was fun to be for you to be in this profession. Right. Um, definitely enjoy it. I definitely enjoy teaching students. Um, and I do also enjoy telling them lots of stories about my <laughs> life and industry, which I sometimes think they roll their eyes about, but most of the time they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. They need to hear some of that sometimes. Perfect. Yep. Always. Especially you're preparing them for the business uh, world. So yeah, and it can be, it can be a little different. Um, I think than what we teach sometimes, but I'm excited to talk to you guys today a little bit about online spaces and collaborative work, which is really, I think important when you get into the business world. Definitely. And, and, you know, with um, the pandemic and remote teaching and, um, you know, everybody has something different, you know, distance learning, remote teaching, online teaching, the collaborative workspace became um, so vital and important um, throughout, you know, the school year. So when you said you wanted to, you know, go over some of that, I think that would have, I, I really wanted to hear how you do it at that level and share with K-12 teachers, because like I said, it's, it's just so important this year. You know, just because yeah. you're higher ed doesn't mean that your needs are, are any different than K-12 teachers, no. right? <laughs> right. And I think a lot of this can be adapted. Um, so I definitely am going to show you guys um, kind of a higher level of this. Um, I will say I teach a lot of team classes um, that Comstrat 310, they're in teams the whole semester. So they really kind of get into it. Um, do you want to just jump into my presentation? Yeah, sounds okay. good. Perfect. All right. Let me... Okay, I am sharing here, so let me roll over to this. All right, so let's talk a little bit about collaborative work in an online space. So something, um, and I've got some great colleagues, and this definitely came from some work with my colleagues, but there's a great article from the Harvard Business Review um, that talks about what a strong team has. And a strong team has a compelling direction a strong structure, a supportive context, and a shared mindset. And while all of this sounds like, you know, a little higher level sometimes, um, most of this we set up as teachers or as instructors. Um, usually a compelling direction, at least for my students, is definitely looking at getting a good grade or learning some kind of knowledge, right? Um, a strong structure. This is typically how the class is structured. Um, you're usually, you know, doing your Canva or whatever, or Canvas or whatever you use um, to really try to understand um, how to set that up. So, you know, we make sure that they have assignments that give them very clear definitions of what they need to do. They should have a supportive context. Um, this is typically tools that they're using in the classroom. It's also an instructor or teacher who knows what they're doing um, and is able to answer questions. All of these things are kind of inherently something we have typically when we set up a classroom. The thing that's kind of hardest sometimes to really instill or really um, get it together, I guess, um, is a shared mindset. Um, what are the commonalities? What are something that they want to do, they want to accomplish or that they have in common 
so that that work life that that work is something that they can have together right are you referring to a student shared mindset or yeah so I would say or both yeah both maybe um but definitely a student shared mindset within that team um it doesn't have to be like an exact match per se but something that they're willing to um find some commonality on um you know, we're and, not and that like, are you referring to like a topic or? So um, uh, I'll like, get it. Yeah, let me okay. get into the shared mindset here shortly. So this is all kind of structure within a team, right? So shared mindset can come from values. Um, we all have values. We all, you know, have certain things that we value over other things. Um, I'm in a program at my college right now called Lift that really kind of helps us kind of, you know, set some social interventions and kind of talk about things and really try to up our teaching standards. Um, and something we've gone over in there, too, is values. What do you value as a person? And a lot of times when you're looking at that shared mindset, you're trying to find common values um, within the team or within those students. So what do they value in their work? What do they want to produce? Um, what does it look like? What do they value on the day-to-day -day life? Um, these are just some examples. Um, I always, you know, it was great in Lyft. We sat down and we actually like looked through our own values and really talked about them and how it kind of affects our teaching, right? And how we kind of see it in a mindset. So with students, um, when we were in person, <laughs> I would kind of do an activity where we built a rubric um, contract, social contract around values um, and really trying to kind of show them that they're all agreeing to kind of this shared mindset of values in their work. And it was fun. Um, and what did you do? Like, did you have like certain questions? Yep. So uh, we would go into you know, kind of things that I would ask them, like, you know, what does the perfect teammate look like? What does the worst teammate look like? Um, what is something that annoys you when working in teams? Most of my students, um, you know, I feel like we start working in teams as young as maybe like first grade, right? Maybe even kindergarten. I don't really remember much from kindergarten. Um, except that I play Power Rangers at lunch, which was awesome, <laughs> or at recess. Um, and we, there was never enough, like, girl characters, so we always fought about who was the pink ranger and who was the yellow ranger. But um, really kind of letting them think about it, showing them – I usually show that list of values at the start of the – you know, at the start of class, and we go up on the whiteboard, and I say, what are, you know, four thing, four values that you think as a class – that would make teamwork easier or better or ideal. So we would go, we would talk it through, um, you know, have people chiming in. I do teach communications classes, so I usually have a, at least a couple of talkers, right? Um, I do, I am lucky in that area. I don't have a lot of silence. And we would get to the like, you know, four. I would then um, have my, lovely little box of I have orange and green but sometimes it was red and green green you know um post-it notes I just did circles that I cut out from home and glue sticks all sorts of crafting gear and a big sheet of poster board and we would have these four values as a class we would define what the like what the perfect person would look like in that value in an A format. So like if I was scoring someone from one to four, what does four look like? And then what, and everyone got one to two stickers. And then what would the worst person look like? And everyone would get one to two stickers. And then when we would have this poster board with the four values and our four root, you know, our four, four values and everyone would have a sticker, we would take some time First round, we'd go up there and everyone would post what they think their perfect one would look like after writing it down. Write down what the perfect looks like, post it up there. Look what the bad one looks like, post it up there. 
And then I would give everyone a chance to go up afterwards. Um, and we would just tally mark it. So this is, you know, old school in class tally mark. And we'd have this huge poster board at the end of the class. Um, my students would, you know, take some time, look at it. I would then do a lot of the lifting here, go off <laughs> and then write up this rubric. Um, next class period, I would present the rubric. Usually there is no changes. Everyone was pretty happy. And at the end of the semester, this is what each student would grade each other on um, as a team. I do put team points into my projects. So a couple different ways. The easiest way I have found is I tell them, hey, you know, we have four categories. They're each worth four points. You grade each teammate plus yourself out of four for each category. You know, 16 points total. I average them all together. And that's the grade you get. Um, takes a little bit of time. I have some Excel sheets, but that's how we would, that's how we would do it. Um, and, and essentially they're building the rubric. Right. So I don't have to build it. Yeah. Which is nice. And they kind of have this shared mindset and they buy into it. Right. Um, because this is them buying into it. This is their mindset. So when I started trying to figure out how to do this, um, online or in an online space, um, it got a little bit there's a couple more steps to it, right? <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of us are experiencing in Zoom. I get a lot in the chat, but I might not get as much people talking. Um, there doesn't feel to be that space. So um, I do an exercise for my advertising class that's a little unrelated to this, um, but I use card sorting which I had physical sets of cards with adjectives on them. And we would talk about branding. And this is a whole different conversation. We would do this in class. I would give them some prompts. And it was really talking about finding your like brand voice and like really understanding what a brand is depending on these cards. So I thought, okay, a card sort. A card sort will work. So um, let me... So... Moving this to the online space, I thought, all right, card sorting, that's where we're going to start. So step by step, um, before class, I had students do a card sort. And so this card sort, um, let's see if I can share a different screen here. Stop share. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can do this real quick. And then... So I would, so I found this really nifty tool and it's actually supposed to be used for researchers, <laughs> which I mean, in a sense we are, um, card, card sort and card is spelled with a K and it's free. Um, it's a nifty little, um, tool. We can go in, um, set it up, set up an experiment is what they call it. Um, you set up your values. So I will say, really think about the values that you want your team. You can kind of lead them places here um, with the values. But you go in, you add the values. And I just added 10 in here. You can get up to 50. I never heard of this tool before. Yeah, it was a it was a long it was a long Google search. Um, I was really trying to find for something that worked for me. Um, so it was. Um, I went in there, added some values down. Um, there we go. You can add questions. Um, but this is kind of what it looks like, right? So you say, all right, your results will not be recorded for this preview. This is a preview study. I'm just showing you guys. You can add your directions in. For class, please complete the card sort. Take note, either write it down or take a screenshot of your type top values. And you just have them sort. They're going to sort what they value as a, as a team. So fairness. And maybe what they don't value. Um, I wouldn't want to be. Students can access this all at one time. Right, it, they can access this at once. So everyone's going to do it individually. Um, do it before class, and they're just going to come in with their top. I say top, you know, four to five, just so they have it. 
Um, but yeah, launches does this. Um, there is a way to record results because this is used a lot for scientific experiments, branding experiments, focus groups. But I just tell students to bring their top ones in. Um, it's easier that way. I don't have to keep track of anything, right? So it's all here um, and they have their values. So this will take them, you know, if they really think about it, it could take them quite a bit of time. If not, it could take them a little, you know, very quickly. Um, I will say in Lyft, um, they showed us something very similar to this, but they actually ended up pairing students up based on their values. So that's another way of going about this if you really want to do it is if you know, have a huge group of students who all value creativeness. Maybe you want to pair them all together. I, I personally like want them to find kind of some other stuff about themselves as a team um, or as a class compared to like trying to sort them all by values. Um, I think sometimes having like someone a who, a balance yeah, it's, you know, I, I sometimes, um, I, I definitely kind of took this from Professor Cooney. We sometimes do a pre-survey for teams to like sort, sort them out. And something I ask is like, are you a taskmaster? And none of the students, like all the students always think that's a bad thing, but I like having at least one like person who considers themselves a taskmaster in every group, right? They're gonna like keep them on track. So I like them to come in with these commonalities. So from there, um, let me get back to my PowerPoint. And sorry that I keep jumping. I have like a billion no, cats that's here. Fine. So. I'm going back and forth between screens. Yeah. So. Okay. So um, have them come in with those values. You know, they kind of expect what to come into class with. And you're going to then go into what you're going to do during class. So either you have maybe these students already in teams, maybe you want to do this as a whole whole class activity. But basically under each category, you're going to have the students ident identify their common values. And then under each category, they're, you're going to have them create a bullet list, a description of behaviors, attitudes, and actions they feel are most valuable and want to commit to as a group. And I'm glad I'm on the sweet life. I used Jamboard like you wouldn't believe this semester. Um, that was like my go-to. If I needed something, we were on Jamboard. Um, <laughs> I loved it. And, you know, my students grasp very quickly how to copy a Jamboard. So, you know, you have those master ones and then you can just jump into them copying it and using it. Um, I will say in the fall that took a couple of times through not to have someone like go on the master slide, but we figured it out. Definitely by second semester, my college students understood this is how you copy a Jamboard. So I set up a pretty simple Jamboard. Um, it's not anything, you know, too crazy. And most of the time they're going to set up most of it. You could even have them just create it. But I typically just kind of like give them at least an outline start so, yeah. yeah it's not anything and i'll show you it's not anything too let's see it's not anything too crazy or too different um but you know a very basic jam board here right they you know they think contribution quality professionalism cooperation and the thing is a lot of people are going to define these differently right so this is really where stuff kind of gets set in stone um they understand what they're talking about, um, and they're setting it up for you. They'll go through, look at these. I typically have them in breakout rooms and just let them talk. Um, I might visit in just to see, see what they're up to, but they can run these themselves. And then finally, like after, after they kind of go through this, we take a whole class period to do this. Um, I do give them the homework a little ahead of time, like the after class if they want to finish it in class. But this typically takes all of class, um, and I teach – about an hour most okay. of the time. Um, Tuesday, my Tuesday, Thursdays are hour and a half, but. Now yeah. is this like a team for the whole semester or is it? Yes, just so typically project? this is okay. team whole semester for projects. I've actually used something very similar for just projects too, um, but my projects are typically final projects. So they do wanna like have something kind of set up like this too. Um, yeah, I don't do a lot of short, project teams. Okay. I typically do like six week long is probably the yeah. shortest I've ever had for like a project team. Like um, a cumulative project. 
yeah, um, built on each other. Um, so I go from there and it's not, you know, as I said, this is pretty easy. They get into it. They really talk. They really discuss. Um, and then we go into the after. So I think you saw, let me see if I can just pull that up. So yeah, um, afterwards, I basically just put them into Google Slides or into a Google Doc. And I ask them to commit to what they've put down. Um, so this is... And I will say we use something maybe a little bit with it's when it's a whole class, whole semester class, we have a little bit more to this. Um, but, you know, we have them do a team charter. Um, this is how what we're going to grade each other on. This is what we promise to do. And what does the team charter consist of on that first slide? So these are your values right on they're going to put their values on the far left side and then they're going to sit here and take the values that they put in that jam board or what they agreed um what they think that perfect four looks like you know of a teammate you know this is my four for the rubric or this is my perfect score for the rubric and put it down here um and you know they have some notes and this is what they can turn into you um at the, you know, before they really start on any of their teamwork. And then when they go back at the end of the semester, um, you know, you know what values they're grading each other on. You have this. They you have, have this. Reference. Yeah. They have it. They can grade each other on it. And that's the rubric. Um, I will say, I will note, I do give a little bit of extra credit because sometimes, you know, team stuff can get a little messy with the rubrics, right? Um, but I do give them a little extra credit just to kind of one or two points. I don't make, I don't make the team rubric a huge part or a huge, it's not like 50% of the grade, you know, it's like yeah. 16 points out of like the 400 I give the semester, but it's enough for at least one assignment. Um, and it does make students feel like they have equity in what they're doing and that they are able to keep their teammates accountable. Um, and how say, many people do you have on a team? Depends. Um, so I think this semester I did six per team. Oh, okay. Um, I can go, sometimes I go as low as four. I don't really like to go lower than four. Sometimes I have students self-select teams, which is always interesting, right? And I've had teams as low as three on that too. But um And what do you say to the student that doesn't want to be on a the team? They want to work by themselves. Do you yeah, that's a good question. Well, thing? you know, I I have not. I tell the students in my three tens the first day of class that it's a team. It's a team class, and they oh, just kind okay. of accept it. Um, when I do final projects, I do I will give students options to be the only person on the team if they if they want to be the only person, right? Um, especially in the current climate, I haven't done it as much in person, um, but with you know scheduling and stuff like that, I sometimes will let them be the only person, but then I will tell them that I have to definitely, and I might, maybe I'm too nice, but I definitely decrease the workload a little bit for that student. So like- Because it's the, only one person doing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, when I have four students, I expect, my expectations are pretty high. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I would expect that, you right. know? Yeah. Right. And then, so they know like what their responsibilities are and what they need to get done. And then at the end, they yeah. give you that Google slide deck and then yeah. they present you with the with the project or whatnot. Right. So, um, you know, every assignment that I assign, um, you know, I and, uh, you know, they are adults. So I will say this is maybe a little different for K through 12. Um, you know, they take a class, they take at least 10 minutes to like sit through and like assign task out. And some, you know, I'll show them an Excel spreadsheet on how to assign tasks out. And a lot of our work, you know, we're working with creatives or we're working with different people who have different skill sets. So each person can do something. So they know. Yeah. But yeah. The rubric at the end definitely kind of ties it up prettily for them 
our, you know, little bow so they can kind of go through it. Um, but do you give them the task list that they need to do or do they compile that themselves? Or maybe they add on to what you a get. Little, a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, the assignment will have what needs to be completed, right? Like, I, my, my assignments are like a good scroll long, right? So this is what you need to turn in. Um, in 310, I will say, um, this was definitely something Professor Cooney and I came up with. They do get a task list and we show them the first time how to do it, right? Yeah. But then from here on out, they can get a task list. We don't have to see it. They just know that they have to fill one out. They have to do it. Okay. Okay. And by the time they get to me and kind of some upper level courses, so they'll take 310 from me and then I see them again in like a 381 or a 383 or a 485. They've got that in memory on how to work. Yeah, yeah. So, right. I like that because it, it gives them like a sense of community, like, this is a class community and it's kind of like a bonding thing that you're right. doing with them too. I mean, I think in middle, like I teach middle school, right. so, you know, in middle school, I think it's, it's a whole different, um, you know, mentality. Like right. They're not, they're not adults. So you right. have to kind of hold their hand a little bit more. And then, you know, some kids are leaders and they'll naturally just lead and delegate and, and do it where others kind of need to be like, you know, you have to hold their hand through it. But I like that you actually let them pick the values from that list. Right. And come up with the four, the three, the two, the one. And then, because I think then when they're doing the project, they know what they want to like you know achieve and they know what they need to do to get there right it's really just setting up um it's funny because in in communications campaigns we have something called typically a ghost plan g-o-s-t so goals objectives strategy tactics and that's how we kind of set it up but when you think about teaching students you want to give them that overarching goal what do they want to achieve what are their objectives from the class and how are they going to do it and so, like, you can kind of see it almost playing out the same way for the students. Yeah, I'd like to try that strategy next year um, in my class. I, I, I think it's I think it gives the kids some type of ownership of what you're doing, you know, if for a project or even just if you're making um, like classroom expectations and things like that. It doesn't have to be a project, but it can be classroom expectations and right you know, there's a, things there's, like that like it's just they there's a lot of application yeah definitely and and you know they always say oh you shouldn't you know i remember when i was back in college going in the education track they always said like you should sit down and do the ex classroom expectations or rules and guidelines with the kids in the beginning of the school year. Let them tell you, you know, don't you say it because then they don't take ownership in it. And that's kind of what this reminds me of. Yeah, I think, you know, having someone and it does kind of come with those classroom expectations, too. As I said, there's a lot of application. But, yeah, having students take ownership of what they're doing and of that team. Um is it going to work perfectly in every team? No, but I've no, had some, yeah. I've had some students who like literally commented like, this is the best team I've ever been on the whole entire time I've been here. But I've also had students who've come to me and be like, I don't know how to manage my classmates. Right. And so our, you know, how to get this project done. And mind you, we're running, we're building a website. We're doing two social media campaigns and Google analytics plus Google ads. So there's a lot. Oh, and an HTML email. So like mm -hmm. all of that. And some people just wait to the last minute to do things. Um, and it bothers other people. And so you're just, you know, you try to help the student who comes to you as best as you can. But, you know, I typically do a mid-semester check-in where let's solve all the problem. You know, like I don't put them in their normal teams. I break them up into different Zoom rooms. Yeah. And then and say. Then talk to them. Yeah. And then just have them solve every other group's problem. Right. So like they kind of collaborate in this little, I have a Padlet set up and like, where are you having difficulty with in your team? 
you know, what are some things that are working for your team? You know, how would you solve this problem? And then as these different little breakout rooms, they kind of solve it together. So they're not in their like semester long team. They're in their normal team. Still working through that one. It's not perfect yet. But I do think it's a good reminder. You know, usually we do it after the first campaign, which is a little bit after midterm. So you so, so you rotate the kids through the small groups according to so they have the randomly? home team. Yes, yeah, so they have their home team the whole semester, right? So like okay. um like future voters was one that I had. You know, they did stuff about voting rights the whole semester, right? But at midterm, um, I have, you know, six teams in a class. I just randomly assign the students into breakout rooms, try not to get them as their same team. Let's see if I can actually pull this up for you guys. I know we're at the end, but this is kind of interesting. Let's see if I have it. Uh, I did it on Padlet because it was easier to do it. Here we go. Team check-in. And this was like a mid-year check-in or mid-semester? Yeah, mid-semester. We don't do years, but yeah, about midterm. Um, this is not as pretty as my other stuff because I wasn't expecting to show it, but I'll oh, show that's you. that's okay. <laughs> um, okay, team check-in. So I have them kind of come in. Um, I set up a Padlet. Um, Padlet is free. You guys should use it. It's a little bit more of an advanced jam board. Um, more like a, I would say more like a bulletin board than jam board maybe is a little bit. You can vote on things, which is nice. And these are, I ask, what is the biggest barrier you're facing when running your digital campaign? They answer. And I give them time to do this in class. Um, what is the pain point you're experiencing when working in teams? You know, I give them that. And then what would you, what could you need, what could you need help with when it comes to teamwork? And, you know, those things, um, I have everybody answer individually, right? We go through these, answer individually. I put them into breakout rooms that aren't their normal team. So different classmates working in different teams. Um, basically showing everybody that there's a little bit of strife sometimes just working in teams. We're all kind of the same, right? We're a little bit, yeah. that's kind of belonging. Um, and then we go through and basically, you know, I go through here and it's good for me because I can go in and like check to see if there is something that I'm not making clear in directions. So sometimes like the biggest barrier here is like, I don't understand Google Analytics or I don't understand how to send a MailChimp email. And it's like, OK, that's on me. I can help you there. But these, you know. I will then say, all right, as that your little breakout room with your classmates that you don't normally work with, solve one of these problems. Talk about okay. it. Come back as a class. Um, and this is, you know, when I do make them turn their cameras on and look at me and like discuss this, you know, right? We come back and we discuss these pain points and solutions. Um, I sometimes, sometimes they write down these solutions. It doesn't look like this class did that as much. Um, and it's kind of a good way to reference things back. But sometimes there's just really easy solutions that other teams are doing that I wouldn't have even thought of right, on yeah. how to do things. And so we're learning from each other. Uh -huh. We're kind of getting that sense of social belonging. So everyone's a little like stressed about working in teams. There's not one team that's doing this perfectly and they figure it out. And this is, I do this about midterm. Um, as I say, I do it about, we run two campaign, two digital campaigns a semester. So if you do have a team that you're on for a long time, or even you do, like you turn in one part of a team class, you can definitely come back and check in in the middle and see how things are going. And, and do you find that the kids made an improvement after yeah. they do this exercise? Yeah, most of the time. Um, this is the first, I did something similar fall semester. I didn't really do it. And this is the first time spring semester that I kind of like tweaked, had the, it, more. tweaked, tweaked it more. It, I'm yeah. still tweaking it. Sometimes yeah. it fall, it still kind of is not perfect yet. Um, yeah. Is there anything these, that's perfect? No, no, but yeah. <laughs> and it's sometimes harder. And I think everyone will know this in the online space. Sometimes you feel like you fall completely flat and you're just like, well, that didn't work. All right. Next class. And two, like I teach, two sections of this so like one of them it worked really well and the other one it was kind of like 
All right, it's Tuesday morning and apparently no one's awake. Um, so can yeah. I give you guys coffee or something? Yeah. Can you please talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in my room being very excitable. And what are you guys doing? Um, so, you know, I still think there's a little bit of tweaking to that. I do see some improvement. There's still some groups that, you know, still have a little bit of struggle. But, you know, I had a group that really got it together. Mind you, um, they, the, the struggles first time was just scheduling stuff. They weren't figuring out how to get their schedules together. They got together the second group. Um, and I think this helped a lot because they were able to see like what other teams were doing for scheduling tools came back. Were they ideas. able to, were they utilizing the tools to collaborate as a team? Yeah, somewhat. Um, I mean, they, you, we do a lot of Google docs. I think, um, if I could figure out a way to get them a workflow management tool for free, I probably would like make them do it. But some teams are a little, a little better at Google docs with like the collaboration and some of them are a little less better or not as good. Um, and it, you know, and then communication, um, they choose their form of communication. I have them write it down, but you know, people what can do they choose? What do they choose? Do they what, choose like they each choose different text and app or yeah, we've got everything from WhatsApp to Facebook messenger to just text messages, um, and email canvas has something built in, but they don't typically use that as much. Um, I like to let them use what they're comfortable with. But as like, so I'm, I'm all right. So yeah. I'm going to ask you this. Yeah. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Right. So I, under, yeah, let them, you know, collaborate with whatever tool they want to use, whatever they feel more comfortable, but in the real world, is that really what they're going to be doing? Do you think? So I will say it differs company to company. So I've worked in Does several it? different yeah. ones. Right. Um, so I worked, God, I feel like I'm ancient because I've been around for like I was at the like start of like Twitter and Facebook. Right. So, um, you know, it used to, you know, when I was in grad school doing my a billion different internships. Right. I had a lot of email. That's what we kind of kept track of. Um, yep. Google Docs was new. So like most of my grad work definitely was a Google Doc. Um, I still find those randomly because I haven't deleted them from grad school. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that was pretty good work. Um I went into another place that had its own internal system. That was a bunch of checks and balances. That was a little confusing, but I just had to learn it. But this was a job too, that I had to do like three weeks of training before I even started the job. But then when I went to higher ed, we used free apps, right? So we used Trello, um, which is a good one, which is workflow. And then we've also used Microsoft Teams. I use that now. With my, you know, since we've moved virtually with my colleagues. Um, and that had a lot of, like, there was some good back channel stuff on how to, like, where things were going. And I now do a lot of, like, extracurricular projects with Slack. Yeah, I was going to say, you and know, Slack. Slack would be great. Um, it's something Rebecca and I are going to meet here shortly, a couple of weeks from now to talk about 310. So I've thought about maybe doing Slack or something. She's done Slack in a couple of, of her classes. Slack seems to work, but it's also like, yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, how much do you want to control? Yeah. Like it, I don't know. It's, it, it's like, I'm in so many different things and it's like, wait, where does it end? Like, right. And so like, where is it, where, where's the line? Like, right. I, I and don't so that's know. Kind of like, it's like counterproductive. Right. So let them, let, let them decide. They can figure out protein. Yeah, I was just trying to see your point of view on yeah. what would be more, I guess, valuable. Industry, yeah, yeah. Industry standard. Yeah. And that's always something to think about. Right. I mean, I would say Slack would be Slack or Microsoft Office or Trello would be something interesting to use. Um, but I also know there's some places that just work on email and you just have to yeah. keep track of all the email. All yeah, the email. email right? Like, yeah, yeah I've got, I've got like, you know, folders upon folders in my outlook box. Um, but you know, I'm, I don't want to be as an instructor, especially with college students, I don't want to be inside that channel for them with teams. They can kind of figure out how to communicate with each other. I can make a lot of suggestions. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, maybe they'll take one, but you know, but you're not them. necessarily teaching them that you're really more just kind of giving them yeah. <laughs> fly a little bit. Please. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I have, and it's different. You have middle schoolers. I have 20 to 21 year olds, right? Yeah, so, it's definitely different. Yeah. You know, I definitely want them to hand. be able to like roll into an internship and be like, oh, I can figure this out. Yeah. Or yeah. into a workplace. Um, I do get a couple of seniors in like some of my, in my 310 classes that are like, you can tell they've been, they're on top of it. They're a little bit more there, but you know, yeah. I feel fully confident that they can roll into a workplace and figure things out. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's part of, you know, preparing them for, you know, I was just curious because like, I know, um, you know, within like my school district, everything is within our domain and things are, you know, enabled or disabled, you know, and, yeah. you, you know, you have like the COPPA, the COPPA, you know, law and the rules and, and stuff like that. So that's why I was asking. And then to see like what would really be useful or helpful for them after right. they graduate, you know? So it's, yeah, it's always a good question. Like, it's so different, you know, it's just, <laughs> yeah, I know. I think back to some of those, I worked at a social media ad agency, like one of my first internships and like Instagram wasn't really even around yet. Right. So it's like, I did mostly Twitter and Facebook. And I think about like the systems I was using and what they've advanced to now. And then like, I can take a lot of lessons from that, but like, you know, half of those systems aren't around anymore. Yeah. So it's, it's useless. Right. And it's yeah. like, I laugh because it, like, you know, I coded a ton of HTML because of like MySpace and other things when I was, you know, younger. And I don't know if students now do as much, have as much like experience, like with weird little coding things, but I can see when a website, if it's not working, I can look at the back end and you're just kind of like, oh, you didn't close this or you didn't do this. And it's just from like weird MySpace life yeah, lessons from yeah. being a nineties kid. But like, yeah. That's not around anymore. <laughs> Am I, yeah. do I know how to code HTML? No, I'm, I did not take those classes. But because there was my space, I figured, you know, you I have it a, out. I know enough. Like I can make a template look okay. I can see if there's like, oh, your Google Analytics isn't working on your website. Oh, you forgot to close the code that they gave you. The tag, yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I think there's yeah, a little bit of that too. It's, I mean, <laughs> I know they're pushing out the computer science and, you know, kids are more um exposed to code in now and yeah. uh text-based code in especially for high schoolers you know yeah. even eighth graders you know um but yeah i think that's definitely has definitely um improved especially in new jersey it, it, it definitely <laughs> did so I think yeah. that we'll find that out in like five to 10 years after the kids graduate. Right, like figuring it out later. Yeah, it's just funny because I do think there is sometimes we, I will say there, I think sometimes there's an assumption that the students are a little bit more tech savvy than we think they are. Um, and I think we all learned that this, you know, these past two semesters for sure. They still need a little handholding. So. Yeah, they do. They do. But you can also just let them, I mean, there's always, you know, judge them judge them a little bit more on effort or grade them a little bit more on effort than perfection and let them kind of figure it out themselves. Yeah, I and agree. A lot of my jobs is figuring it out. And, and that's I did. a role model <laughs> and for them too. Like you're right. leading by example too. So it's, it's <laughs> Oh, it's, they know when yeah. things fell miserably and they're like, why is this tech not working in the middle of class? You're like, nah, I tried. Sorry. We'll figure it out. <laughs> right, we'll figure it out. I don't know why this piece of tech is not working for us let's pivot to something else. What would you like to do today? Yep. So, yeah. There's always that too. So yeah, you definitely have to have a plan B that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. always. Maybe a plan C too. <laughs> Sometimes that's just like, go take a nap. Um, yeah. I'll see you guys. Like, I'll see you guys later this week. If you have questions, let me know. Yeah. There's not a lot of those, but yeah, that is always an option. Um, at least with college yeah. kids, you can yeah. just let them go. <laughs> I hear you. <ya. laughs> Well, this was great. I really, um, maybe you can share your presentation uh, oh, yeah. I'll send with you the, the audience link. and I'll put it in the show notes because I think that it has a lot of great um, resources and ideas in there. And then if someone wanted to adapt or tweak it, you know, they can look at your reference and, and try it themselves for next year or even for this year. 
you know, some, some people, their school year is almost over. So, you know, I'd like to try it for next year myself. Um, but yeah, and I'll let you know, definitely. Oh yeah. Let me know how, if it works or not. It's I, I'm going to try it. It's not going to be perfect, but I could try, you know, maybe I'll do it for like, you know, cause I'm teaching next year. Yay. Yeah. So maybe in the, um, for like the beginning of the school year, when I start the, the marking period, Oh yeah. Um, you know, with expectations and things like that, we can, we can do something along those lines, but yeah, yeah I'll definitely let you know. Yes. Let me know. I would be very interested to see other adaptions. As I said, these, this continues to be tweaked. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's what <laughs> happens, you know, you know, you have to tweak it all the time. If you don't, then I don't know, you're not, you're not doing justice, right? Right. You're not learning along with them. You exactly. Keep learning. Exactly. Well, this was great. I, I really appreciate you being on. What I'm going to do really quick is just wrap up the show. Um, let me, I'm going to, I have to go to uh, get my screen ready. <laughs> 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 ah, okay. So let me share my screen. All right. All right. So can you see my screen? You are good. Okay. So if you like to visit my website, it's thesweettalk.com. That's the S-U-I-T-E talk.com. Today's episode will be listed here on the homepage as well as the podcast. Um, if you would like to sponsor the Sweet Talk, you can uh, fill out the sponsorship form and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, you can fill out the guest inquiry form. And right now I am scheduling for the fall. So if you like to pay it forward and share what you um, love, then be a guest on the Sweet Talk. Uh, past episodes will be listed here on the episode page with the YouTube video and the show notes, which are Wakelet collections. It will load. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, Jamboard, I have a Jamboard page here and, um, let me get to it. And if you'd like to check out my Jamboard presentation, you can click on the link here. If you'd like to share your idea with me and be featured here in my, um, pay it forward Jamboard presentation by teachers for teachers, you can fill out this form and share your idea with me. I also have an idea board for Jamboard here as well. So you can check that out if you need some inspiration. And that concludes the show. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again, Kara, for being on. It was a pleasure meeting you. I really yeah. enjoyed our connection. Yeah, sorry. And yeah, we only got through one exercise. So I'll share everything um, with the presentation for sure. But awesome. yeah, awesome. We, I have a little bit more. But yeah, I think today was a really good chat. And hopefully, yeah, definitely. Setting works and you people. know what, you can always come back and share the second, um, the second exercise if you like to. Yes. So no worries. Don't worry. <laughs> I over prepared as usual. That's perfectly normal, right? <laughs> Better to be over prepared than under prepared. That's what right. I like. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. All right, everyone. Until next time, have a great evening. Bye. Let's do this.